to my mind, one after the other, after the other, after the other. They're all the same, with no, nothing from the heart. And it's put me off a religious funeral, to be honest, because I don't think I like it. And plus, I don't want all things bright and beautiful sung at my funeral, which everybody seems to have. I've always wanted to be in the funeral business. I done a week's training in Bristol with a, a company down there and enjoyed it. And I was being offered a position, I thought, in the town, but it didn't come through. So I was extremely hurt and disappointed. So anything in the funeral business I thought would be nice. So you couldn't do part-time bearing while you were at full-time work. So when I retired, I was talking to the grave digger and he said, my brother's always looking for spare Paul Bearers. And that's how he became one. His office secretary rings through and gives me a list and when and what time and what day. I did lose my brother when he was 17 and I was 21, which was a great knock, obviously. Uh, and from then on, for some reason, I got more interested in it and uh, but you know when you've got a young family you just can't pursue other interests so I let it lie for a long time but I've always been fascinated by it for some reason. I suppose really you're doing the last possible thing you can for the deceased and try and do it to the best of your ability like we all bow to the coffin when we lower, put it on the trestles, bow to the altar before we bring it out, and because the family are watching, and they're probably watching you more than they're watching the coffin, really. So the best you could do, smart, you know. Sometimes they will ask, once we arrive, do you mind if we carry? And he just gives them a little chat, you know, and we take it out the back so that it don't drop and keep in step if you can. You get used to people, some under control, some breaking their hearts, and that's got a, especially if it's small children about, and, and it's a young father or mother, that is the worst, I oh, awful, yeah. We had one the other day which was in his 40s, and I think, you know, you've got double your lifespan left, really, um, we're taking you. It's such a shame, such a shame. I might as well say I've seen so many be lowered, we have, into water. And that puts me off terribly. Not in here, this is quite dry, but different places. They try and camouflage the bottom with branches and twigs. But no, I don't like it. In the early days, I used to be wonder if I did that right or did that wrong or sometimes when you bury um, the people that have done the grave and put the planks either side for you to stand on when you lower they're not always as sturdy as they should be and might be a bit of earth underneath one bit and you can almost drop you know and it's not good it's not good but uh, I have tripped up one of the boards where it was a bit higher and the mat was covering something which shouldn't have been there and yeah but we're all human can't melt i think it makes you more aware especially when you see people younger than yourself and i mean when i say younger in their 60s or 50s you know that uh still got a lot of life left or years pending but they've been taken with some horrible disease or car accident. Yeah, I, I do. You do get more aware of all that than you would walk in the streets, I suppose. I want uh, Europe, final countdown, when I come in. Uh, I would like Michael Jackson's Earth Song to be listened to, because that means a lot to my mind. And then maybe a good piece of organ music, loud and strong, like Vidor's Toccata for people to come out to because if I'm cremated I should be left there but yes and for everybody to come not like this 
but in bright colors.